What's up guys, it's your favorite QB coach and give me six months of your time and I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. So welcome back to your channel. In this particular video, we're gonna be talking about the driver and I know I haven't done too many of these videos, so I'm sure you guys are gonna be psyched. This particular video, we're really gonna focus in on why you struggle with the driver. As well, we're gonna be going over the data points that really cause curvature issues that you guys probably struggle with. And then we'll talk about some body parts that actually affect those data points. So if you're interested in all this, this is the perfect video for you. And let's go ahead and jump in. But before we get into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, and that is the Kiwi Golf Six Month Program. But more specifically, we have just launched the Driver Kiwi Coach Six Month Program. So if you're interested in learning more about the Kiwi Coach Driver Six Month Program, click on the link down below in the description as well. We'll talk about it a little bit later in this video. And now let's get into the video. So to start this video off, I want to explain the reason why you probably hit your driver not as good as your irons. Now, the first reason is probably going to be quite logical. You guys probably already kind of understand this, but I'm going to be using some terminology and explaining some concepts that should help you further understand this and just give you a little bit more understanding of why you typically hit the driver more offline than your irons. So whenever we talk about curvature, we're talking about spin axis, which just means when you hit the golf ball, it's spinning backwards. If you start to tilt that axis like this, it's going to curve one way. If you start to tilt it off this way, it's going to curve that way as well. So when it comes to driver, because the golf ball is typically going further, hopefully, right? I hope your driver goes further than your irons, but typically it's going further, correct? which means it has more time in the air. So that means if you have the same spin axis with a driver versus an iron, because there's more time in the air, the driver has more time to curve offline, which means it's always gonna go more offline than an iron. So that is one of the most important things you gotta understand, and this is probably one of the reasons why you're struggling with driver. Now, the second reason you struggle with driver is actually gonna be because of the swing plane. And this is something that oftentimes you guys don't really quite understand. So let me kind of explain it like this. So if I were making a plane of a swing that looks something like this, this would be kind of close to a 90 degree swing plane. And as you can see, the sweet spot pretty much never really moves off the target line, right? Which means it's not really rotating this way unless I rotate the shaft. So if I swing on that 90 degree plane, you're probably gonna have a great time pointing the face angle where you want it to point, basically, right? However, with driver, we swing more on a 45 degree plane, which means the plane of the swing is much flatter. So all this means is, relative to that 90 degree swing plane, the sweet spot is not square to the target line or perpendicular to the target line for very long. It's only square for a short period of time because the plane of the swing is much flatter. So this is again another reason why you guys struggle to control the face angle with driver is because the plane of the swing is a lot flatter than let's say an iron swing. So keeping these two in mind, we're gonna start talking about a little bit of face to path. We're gonna start talking about, you know, spin axis a little bit more. And then from there, we're gonna talk about some body parts that you should think about that's gonna help you control your curvature with your driver. So like I said in that last part, I wanna start talking about some data points that will be affecting curvature. I think you guys already kinda of understand spin axis. However, we're gonna go into it first in a little bit more detail. So I've just hit a shot and that shot has probably curved right around 17 yards offline from the target line. So it's actually a pretty good shot with driver. So not, you know, nothing I'd be too pissed about. But the main point here is let's go over some of the data points on the screen. We're gonna show you what they mean. We're gonna break it down. And this should lead us into the next part where we start talking about body parts that could potentially affect these data points. So let's go ahead and take a look at the screen. So the first data point I wanna talk about is gonna be spin axis, which is gonna be this one right here. So remember, imagine that golf ball spinning backwards and then getting tilted about 13.2 degrees to the left as it's spinning backwards. And that's what this shot did. Now in terms of actual curvature, let's say that produced maybe about 10 to 15 yards of curvature with this particular club speed, with the ball speed I had, with the launch that I had, et cetera, et cetera, right? If I swung a lot faster, this actually would have curved more offline because the ball had had more time in the air, just like we said at the beginning of this video. That is kind of how you can think about spin axis. Think about it as the golf ball spinning backwards, think about it in degrees, the higher you swing, the more you have to get these degrees lower, right? So it's more difficult the faster you swing. The slower you swing, you can kind of get away with kind of having a little bit of a tilted spin axis and still not hit it too far away. So from here now, let's talk about really the two data points that actually tilts the axis of the golf ball. And that would be club path and face angle. So with club path on this particular swing, which is gonna be represented by this blue line right here, I was swinging about 3.7 degrees into out when I hit the golf ball. 
So that means if I was swinging, let's say, 45 degrees into out, that's kind of what that would look like, right? So pretty severely into out. That means I was swinging just a little bit into out relative to that target line. Now, if we take a look at this facing right here, it says 0 0.3 degrees right of the target line, which is gonna be represented by this red line right here. So that means when I hit the golf ball, my facing was maybe just a little bit open when I hit the ball. So ultimately, this club path is 3.7, this face is 0 0.3, the face angle is more to the left than the club path, this tilt to the spin axis to the left got me this number right here, and then with this speed and my launch and all of that, that produced right around that 10 yards of curvature. So you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, Cube Coach, you know, it's pretty cool. I understand now, you know, that's what a good shot should maybe look like. That's good for you that you can do that, but I'm not hitting that shot. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a bad swing on purpose. I'm gonna try to hit a little bit of a chipping shot, right, a pretty big hook. We're gonna go take a look at the spin axis now, as well as the club path and the face angle, discuss that. And then from there, that should lead us into what I wanna talk about primarily, which is the body parts that affect what we just hit. So let me go try to hit chipping shot with the best of my capability. I'm gonna keep the scarf on, so for everyone who gets triggered with this scarf on, I apologize, but not really actually. <laughs> Let's go hit a chipping shot. Big old closed stance, big old shut face when I get into the ball, big old chipping shot. Okay, I felt pretty close. So now that last shot, as you can see here, there's five yard increments, 15, 25. I missed that one probably close to about 50 yards offline. So that was a pretty massive hook. So now let's go take a look at the spin axis here. <laughs> and it's right around 55.5 degrees to the left, right? So this would be 45, it was more than 45 degrees to the left. So what caused that? Well, remember our club path and face angle caused that. And for this particular one, I was swinging at about 14 degrees into out, right? That's represented by that blue club path. And then from here, the face angle is about 3.3 degrees to the right of the target line, which is represented by this red line. So now from here, that created a face to path, which is a negative 10.7, right? So the face angle was 10.7 degrees away from this. And then ultimately, like we just said, that created about a 55.5 degree spin axis, which is pretty ridiculous. And that probably, you know, this says about 37 yards offline, actually not 50 something, but let's pretend that curved about 30 yards. So now from here, the question becomes, and this is really the main part of the video and something you guys obviously want to be answered, how do I actually fix this? So in this next part of the video, I wanna actually start to go into first face angle, right? So we're gonna discuss kinda of what can we do with body parts to fix the face angle, and then we'll get into the club path as well. So let's go do that. So as you might have known, if you've come to lessons with myself, I typically recommend on the golf course to always fix the face angle first and not fix the club path. Now, if you are a track man expert, and you're on track man all the time, you can obviously fix the club path because you know exactly what you typically do and you know how to fix it because you practiced it. But for a lot of you guys out there, you don't have access to a track band, so you probably don't know your club path and you don't know probably how to fix it at all. So it's probably not the best approach and it's a lot more difficult typically to fix club path than it is to kind of twist this face a little bit differently and fix it by that, doing that. So when it comes to the body parts that affects the face angle, typically the direct correlators are gonna be in the wrist movements. So if I were to twist the club shaft this way, as you can see, that's gonna point the face angle more and more this way, which would be left is what we would call that. If I supinated my wrist, that's what it's called, that's causing that to happen. Now, if I go ahead and do the opposite motion, right? Go like this, that's pointing the face angle more and more to the right, we would call that. That would be pronation right there. So as you can see, when it comes to kind of closing and opening the face, the direct correlator and the first place we're gonna start with this video is supination and pronation. So now let's start bringing up some encore scenarios like we just hit and how I'd actually go about fixing them using my wrist. So let's take into account the last scenario that we just hit, right? It was that massive chipping shot. So obviously my face angle was too closed to the club path and that created the spin axis too far to the left. Now I know for a lot of you guys out there that might be instructors who have knowledge of track man might say that a 14 degree in doubt club path was the issue and I'd actually probably agree with you as well. But we're trying to take this in the context of someone who doesn't know their club path and doesn't know how to fix it so we're gonna fix the face angle, right? So we're gonna try to get a little bit closer to the path and it's probably gonna be a pretty big push draw, but at least it's not gonna be a chipping shot. So the way I would think about this is right around position six into the golf ball, I'm trying to feel out on that last swing, how much did I feel like this face twisted this way in that section? Did I feel like it twisted this much? Did I feel like it twisted this much? 
or did I feel like it just twisted a little bit? So in my personal opinion, I felt like I twisted the face about this much, right? So let's call that close to 45 degrees. Maybe it's close to like 30 degrees, whatever. It's right around this amount. So that produced the chipping shot, which was, you know, roughly right around 30 yards of curve. I want to minimize that by at least by half. So what I'm going to do on the next swing is I'm actually going to feel, I might not do, but I'm going to feel like I'm actually going to twist the face, maybe like five degrees this way, right? So a little bit, a little bit almost opening feeling. From there, I'm going to do that. And if I accomplish it, I'm going to watch where the ball flight goes. And if I actually fix the miss that I just had, well, then what did I do? Well, I used body parts to fix the curvature, which is exactly what we're trying to learn. So let me go try that out. All right. So like I said, what I'm going to do on this next swing is instead of having it go this way, I'm going to try to have it go this way. I'm going to start it right around P6. As I approach the golf ball, I'm going to kind of gradually have this about five degree opening feel. Let me go hit a shot. We're going to go take a look at, see how the data changes. And then we're going to go from there. And for you guys at home watching that no track man, I'm still going to try to get a pretty far end out path while doing this. Okay. So I'm going to try to keep it consistent like a player who was doing this would. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and try one. So five degrees, slightly opening feel from P6 to P7. Okay. So I felt like I did a pretty decent job at that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the shot. So now on that last shot, as we can see here with the data, let's just take a look at the spin axis first. Remember, I went from negative 55 degree spin axis to now I'm only at Jugo uh, negative spin axis. Now my club path pretty much stayed the same, right? So I was 14 degrees before and out. Now I'm still about 13. However, this time the face angle is 7.5 degrees to the right as opposed to three degrees to the right. So because I got the face angle closer to the club path, the spin axis went less and I actually curved the ball less as well. And ultimately I actually ended up slightly right, right around six yards, seven yards offline of the target line. So what did I do there guys? Well, as you can see, I used pronation in this example, the feeling of it to fix my chipping shot. And that is exactly how you can use a direct correlator like wrist movements to control the face angle. So next, I know a lot of you guys at home who do know TrackMan or you coaches out there, you're like, well, obviously, yes, you, you fix the face angle. That's all good. I understand that. That's cool. But, you know, 12.9 degree club path into out or a 14 degree into out club path, that's a little bit too much. So in this particular point in the video, I'm going to be talking about some body parts and some body movements that if you fix those, you can now shift the club path. Again, for a lot of you guys watching at home who are amateur golfers and you don't have a lot of time to practice, I probably won't recommend you guys to do this part of the video. You can watch it, you can enjoy it, you can learn, maybe even test it out on the driving range. But you're probably gonna have a lot more success with the face angle that we just talked about earlier in this video. But for you guys who are a little bit more advanced, for you teachers out there, for you pros out there that wanna get a little bit more extra with the club path, well, this is the point of the video you wanna watch. So let's get into it. All right, that's it for you guys on YouTube. But before you guys click off the video, let me give you some quick wrap up points. So first and most important point is just understand when you're hitting the driver, it's okay if the driver goes more offline than your irons, even in your three wood. Because the golf ball is traveling more in the air, it has more time to go offline and curve. So it's always gonna go more offline than your irons. Second thing to understand from there, it's really important to understand the spin axis, club path and face angle and understand that for you amateur golfers out there, if you're trying to fix curvature, face angle is the place to start because it's going to be so much easier for you guys to control and actually track and monitor without a track band. So remember, supination right here, that's going to be closing the face angle. Pronation is going to be opening the face angle. I want you guys to experiment with both of those with your feelings and try to actually start to change the amount of curvature that you're currently doing. I recommend if you guys do that, you probably get out and see some pretty good changes and you'll be uh, quite happy. Other than that, I want you guys to check out our driver Kiwi Coach six month program. That's right, we just launched it. If you wanna actually get lessons for myself, specifically on the driver, we have a whole six month program that you can check out on our website. We go over every single lesson, exactly what you're gonna learn on the driver. So if you're struggling for driver and you wanna finally hit the driver longer and straighter, that will be the program for you. So check out that link down below. We offer it for our physical lessons and online lessons. So check it out and we hope to see you guys in the next video.